An unearthly child, sometimes referred to as 100,000 BC, is the first serial of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who. It was first broadcast on BBC TV in four weekly parts from the 23rd of November to the 14th of December 1963. Scripted by Australian writer Anthony Coburn, the serial introduces William Hartnell as the first Doctor and his original companions, Carol Ann Ford as the Doctor's granddaughter, Susan Foreman, with Jacqueline Hill and William Russell as school teachers Barbara Wright and Ian Chesterton. The first episode deals with Ian and Barbara's discovery of the Doctor and his time space ship TARDIS in a junkyard in contemporary London. The remaining episodes are set amid a power struggle between warring Stone Age factions who have lost the secret of making fire. The show was created to fill a gap between children's and young adult programming. Canadian producer Sidney Newman was tasked with creating the show, with heavy contributions from Donald Wilson and C.E. Weber. Newman conceived the idea of the TARDIS, as well as the central character of the Doctor. Production was led by Verity Lambert, the BBC's first female producer, and the serial was directed by Waris Hussein. Following several delays, the first episode was recorded in September 1963 on 405 line black and white videotape, but was re recorded the following month due to several technical and performance errors. Several changes were made to the show's costuming, effects, performances, and scripts throughout production. The show's launch was overshadowed by the assassination of John F. Kennedy the previous day, resulting in a repeat of the first episode the following week. The serial received mixed reviews, and the four episodes attracted an average of 6 million viewers. Retrospective reviews of the serial are favorable. It later received several print adaptations and home media releases. Topic. Plot At Cole Hill School, teachers Ian Chesterton and Barbara Wright have concerns about pupil Susan Foreman, who has an alien outlook on England. When the teachers visit her address to investigate, they encounter a police box and hear Susan's voice inside. An old man arrives, but refuses to let the teachers inside the police box. They force their way inside to find Susan in a futuristic control room that is larger than the police box exterior. Susan explains that the object is a time and space machine called the TARDIS and the old man is her grandfather. The unnamed old man, whom Ian and Barbara refer to as the Doctor, says that he and his granddaughter are wanderers in the fourth dimension, exiled from their own planet. Refusing to let Ian and Barbara leave, the Doctor sets the TARDIS in flight and ends up in the Stone Age. Zar, the leader of a primitive Paleolithic tribe, attempts to make fire. A young woman called her warns him that if he fails to do so, the stranger called Cal will be made leader. After exiting the TARDIS, the Doctor is kidnapped by Cal, who witnesses him light a match. Cal takes the Doctor back to the tribe and threatens to kill him if he does not make fire. Ian, Barbara and Susan intervene, but the group is imprisoned in a large cave. With the help of Old Mother, who believes that fire will bring death to the tribe, they escape from the settlement but are intercepted and recaptured before reaching the TARDIS. Cal says they will be sacrificed if they do not make fire. While Ian tries to start a fire, Cal enters the cave and attacks Zar, but is killed. Ian gives a burning torch to Zar, who shows it to the tribe and is declared leader. Susan notices that placing a skull over a burning torch makes it appear alive. When her enters the cave, she is faced with several burning skulls, and screams in terror, allowing the group to flee to the TARDIS and escape through time and space to a silent and unknown forest. Unnoticed by the crew, the radiation meter rises to danger. Topic Production Topic Conception In December 1962, BBC Television's controller of programmes Donald Bavistock informed head of drama Sidney Newman of a gap in the schedule on Saturday evenings between the sports showcase Grandstand and the pop music programme Duke Box Jury. Bavistock figured that the programme should appeal to three audiences, children who had previously been accustomed to viewing television during the timeslot, the teenage audience of Duke Box Jury, and the adult sports fan audience of Grandstand. Newman decided that a science fiction program should fill the gap. Head of the script department Donald Wilson and writer C.E. 
Weber contributed heavily to the formatting of the program, and co-wrote the program's first format document with Newman. The latter conceived the idea of a time machine larger on the inside than the outside, as well as the central character of the mysterious Doctor and the name Doctor Who. Production was initiated several months later and handed to producer Verity Lambert, the BBC's first female producer, and story editor David Whitaker to oversee, after a brief period when the show had been handled by a caretaker. Producer, Rex Tucker. Topic: <laughs> Casting and characters In Weber's original production documents, the character of the Doctor, referred to as Doctor Who, was a suspicious and malign character who hated scientists and inventors, and had a secret intention to destroy or nullify the future. Newman rejected this idea, wanting the character to be a father figure. Tucker offered the role of the Doctor to Hugh David, having spent a year working on Night Errant Limited and not wanting to be tied to another series, David turned down the role. Tucker envisioned a young actor to play the Doctor with aged makeup, however, Lambert favored an older actor to avoid preparation time and add authenticity to the role. The part was turned down by actors Leslie French, Cyril Cusack, Alan Webb and Jeffrey Bailden. Cusack and Webb were reluctant to work for a year on a series, while Bailden wished to avoid another old man. Role. Lambert and director Waris Hussein invited William Hartnell to play the role. After several discussions, Hartnell accepted, viewing it as an opportunity to take his career in a new direction. The Doctor's companion was originally named Bridget or Biddy, a 15 year old girl eager for life. Her teachers were Miss Lola McGovern, a 24 year old timid woman capable of sudden courage, and Cliff, a physically perfect, strong, and courageous man. Bridget was renamed Susan, Suzanne Foreman, later changed to Susan, and writer Anthony Coburn made her the doctor's granddaughter to avoid any possibility of sexual impropriety implicit in having a young girl traveling with an older man. Newman was reluctant about the idea, as he wanted the character to have human naivety. Miss McGovern later became history teacher Miss Canning, and Susan's birth name briefly became Finn Duclair. When the show's Bible was written, the two teachers were renamed Ian Chesterton and Barbara Wright. Chesterton was much more violent in earlier drafts of the script. William Russell was chosen to portray Chesterton, being the only actor considered by Lambert to do so. Tucker held auditions for the roles of Susan and Barbara on 25 June 1963. Actresses Krista Bergman, Anne Castaldini, Maureen Crombie, Heather Fleming, Camilla Hassa, Waveney Lee, Anna Polk and Annika Wills were all considered for the role of Susan, while Sally Holm, Philly DeLore and Penelope Lee were considered for Barbara. Following Tucker's departure from production, Lambert was in talks with actress Jacqueline Lenya to play Susan, but the role was ultimately given to Carol Ann Ford, a 23-year-old who typically played younger roles. Lambert's friend Jacqueline Hill was chosen to play Barbara. Topic. Writing The program was originally intended to open with a serial entitled The Giants, written by Weber, but was scrapped by June 1963 as the technical requirements of the storyline, which involved the leading characters being drastically reduced in size, were beyond their capabilities, and the story itself lacked the necessary impact for an opener. Due to the lack of scripts ready for production, the untitled second serial from Coburn was moved to first in the running order. The order change necessitated rewriting the opening episode of Coburn's script to include some introductory elements of Weber's script for the first episode of The Giants. As a result, Weber received a co writer's credit for An Unearthly Child on internal BBC documentation. Coburn also made several significant original contributions to the opening episode, mostly notably that the Doctor's time machine should resemble a police box, an idea he conceived after seeing a real police box while walking near his office. Topic. Filming The show remained unnamed in April 1963, simply referred to as the Saturday Serial. It was provisionally scheduled to begin recording on 5 July, to be aired on 27 July, but was delayed. A pilot recording was scheduled to begin filming on 19 July, if successful, it could be broadcast on 24 August. Production was later deferred for a further two weeks while scripts were prepared, and the recording on 19 July was rescheduled as a test session for the dematerialization effect of the TARDIS. 
The show's initial broadcast date was pushed back to the 9th of November, with the pilot recording scheduled for the 27th of September and regular episodes made from the 18th of October. The broadcast date was soon pushed back a week to the 16th of November due to the BBC's athletics coverage on the 9th of November and later to the 23rd of November. The show was granted a budget of £2,300 per episode, with an additional £500 for the construction of the TARDIS. Tucker was originally selected as the serial's director, but the task was assigned to Hussein following Tucker's departure from production. Some of the pre filmed inserts for the serial, shot at Ealing Studios in September and October 1963, were directed by Hussein's production assistant Douglas Camfield. The first version of the opening episode was recorded at Lime Grove Studios on the evening of 27 September 1963, following a week of rehearsals. However, the recording was bedeviled with technical errors, including the doors leading into the TARDIS control room failing to close properly. After viewing the episode, Newman ordered that it be mounted again. During the weeks between the two tapings, changes were made to costuming, effects, performances, and scripts. The second attempt at the opening episode was recorded on the 18th of October, with the following three episodes being recorded weekly from the 25th of October to the 8th of November. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Themes and analysis. Scholar Mark Bold discusses how the serial establishes Doctor Who's socio-political stances in his 2008 essay. Science fiction television in the United Kingdom. He writes, The story represents the separation, reunion, capture, escape, pursuit, evasion that will dominate the next 26 years, as well as the program's consistent advocacy of the BBC's political and social liberalism. He cites Ian and Barbara's attempt to teach a cavewoman kindness, friendship, and democracy, writing, A tyrant is not as strong as the whole tribe acting collectively. Scholar John R. Cook reflected in 1999 that the presence of teachers as companions echoes Doctor Who's original educational remit. The New Scientist noted, in 1982, that the serial was set in the Stone Age because the show's original intention was to bring to life the Earth's history. Lawrence Miles and Tapwood argue that the cavemen's focus on fire is meant to stand in for all technology, thus linking the latter three episodes with the questions of generational change raised by the first episode and its focus on suspicion of children, and tying that to a discussion of technological progress, including the nuclear bomb. They also argue that, contrary to the tendency to treat the story as a one-episode introduction to the series followed by three episodes of running around and escaping, that the piece should be considered as a single, dramatic whole that is about making four people who barely know one another learn to trust each other. Reception Broadcast and ratings The first episode was transmitted at 5.16 p.m. on Saturday, 23 November 1963. The assassination of John F. Kennedy the previous day overshadowed the launch of a new television series. As a result, the first episode was repeated a week later, on 30 November, preceding the second episode. The first episode was watched by 4.4 million viewers 9.1% of the viewing audience, and it received a score of 63 on the Appreciation Index. The repeat of the first episode reached a larger audience of 6 million viewers. Across its four episodes, An Unearthly Child was watched by an average of 6 million 12.3% of potential viewers. Episodes 2 to 4 achieved ratings of 5.9, 6.9 and 5.4 million viewers, respectively. Mark Bold suggests that a disappointing audience reaction and high production costs prompted the BBC's chief of programmes to cancel the series until the Daleks, introduced in the second serial in December 1963, were immediately popular with viewers. The serial has been repeated twice on the BBC, on BBC Two in November 1981, as part of the repeat season The Five Faces of Doctor Who, achieving average audience figures of 4.3 million viewers, and on BBC Four as part of the show's 50th anniversary on 21 November 2013, achieving an average of 630,000 viewers. Topic: Critical response. The serial received mixed reviews from television critics. 
Michael Gower of the Daily Mail wrote a short favorable review of the first episode, claiming that the ending must have delighted the hearts of the Telegoons who followed. A reviewer in the Daily Worker stated that they intend following closely to the show, describing the ending as satisfying. Variety felt that the script suffered from a glibness of characterizations which didn't carry the burden of belief, but praised the effective camera work, noting that the show will impress if it decides to establish a firm base in realism. After the second episode, Mary Crozier of The Guardian was unimpressed by the serial, stating that it has fallen off badly soon after getting underway. She felt that the first episode got off the ground predictably, but there was little to thrill. While the second was a depressing sequel, wigs and furry pelts and clubs were all ludicrous. Conversely, Marjorie Norris of Television Today commented that if the show keeps up the high standard of the first two episodes it will capture a much wider audience. Retrospective reviews are mostly positive towards an unearthly child. Referring to the serial while discussing the early years of Doctor Who in 1982, the new scientists Malcolm Peltu praised the script, acting and direction, but criticized the dated scenery. In 2008, Radio Times reviewer Patrick Mulkern praised the casting of Hartnell, the moody direction and the thrilling race back to the TARDIS. Christopher Barn of the AV Club in 2010 labeled An Unearthly Child an essential serial to watch for background on the program. In his review, he noted that the first episode is brilliantly done, the next three together could be about a half hour shorter but get the job done. He praised the characters of Ian, Barbara, and the mysterious Doctor, but noted that he was far from the character he would become and Susan was something of a cipher, with the hope she would develop later. In a 2006 review, DVD Talks John Sinnott called the first episode excellent, but felt the story goes downhill a bit with the introduction of the prehistoric time period. He cited the slower pace, the discussions in Tarzan speak, and the lack of tension or high stakes. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commercial releases. Topic In print Writer David Whittaker omitted An Unearthly Child from the first spin-off novelization, Doctor Who in an exciting adventure with the Daleks later retitled Doctor Who and the Daleks and Doctor Who, the Daleks, with Ian and Barbara's entrance into the TARDIS leading directly into an adaptation of the second televised serial, The Daleks. Historian James Chapman highlights this as a reason that, in an age before home video, many people believed the Dalek serial to be the first Doctor Who story because the novelizations published by Target Books were the closest that fans had to the original programs. Terence Dix wrote the Target novelization of this story, initially published as Doctor Who and an Unearthly Child on 15 October 1981 with a cover by Andrew Skilleter. The release also received several translations worldwide. A verbatim transcript of the transmitted version of this serial, edited by John McElroy and titled The Tribe of Gum, was published by Titan Books in January 1988. It was the first in an intended series of Doctor Who script books. In 1994, a phone card with a photomontage of the episode was released by Jandar International Promotions. Topic. Home media. The story was originally released on VHS on 5 February 1990, with a cover designed by Alistair Pearson. The unaired pilot was released as part of the Hartnell years on 3 June 1991, and with Doctor Who, The Edge of Destruction and Doctor Who, the pilot episode on 1 May 2000. A remastered version of the serial was also released on VHS on 4 September 2000. For the DVD release on 30 January 2006, the serial was released as part of Doctor Who, the beginning alongside the following two serials, with several special features, including audio commentaries and comedy sketches. It was also released in the US and Canada on 27 May 2014 as part of the Blu-ray set for An Adventure in Space and Time.